Hi, my name is Gary Height, and my art show, Code Perception, is going to be opening at Spirals Gallery on Saturday, March 28th. Emily Swan Young, the curator, asked me to do a short video showing how to read these poems. Uh, they're poems and works of visual art at the same time. Uh, let me show you this one that's not framed yet. Um, portrait of my friend Richard Cupcake Gross. Um, and now as it comes closer you'll see that the image is made out of letters and if you look even closer you'll see that the letters can be read across and down like a crossword and you'll see his uh, nickname Cupcake uh, up there at the top. Now you may have also noticed that the words all run together along a line. Uh, I spent many years uh, trying to read these manuscripts. This is the Coptic Pistis Sophia, and they write it uh, in the same way all the way across uh, with no spaces between the words, so you have to uh, decide where to divide the words, and this can cause differences in, in interpretation. For a long time I've been considering the question of the visual aspects of poetry. Most poetry forms are based on sound. What I wanted to do was find a poetic form in which the visual aspect was necessary. I decided to concentrate on the letter because the letter is the basic visual element of our written language. Some of my first experiments in that were crossword poems where I would write a poem that goes uh, that can be read both across and down. One of my very earliest poems of this type can be found in The Lost and Found Times by uh, John Bennett here as you can see it says be the he afford a tar loom freedom ate me are and then if you read it down it says that far he fart be free ole rod doom m me uh, later on I made these two books uh, that this one is um, ten poems that are all ten across and ten down. Uh, and so I was developing some some skills and trying to learn how to write in this way. It's a difficult constraint, but you can get a lot of messages through and have a lot of fun with it. Uh, Fence Magazine published some of them. L.A. Abort Mitosis. My Toes M. I. Oak Text. Narc Mole. Duck Acid. M. S. R. O. Sat At. Going that way. And then if you go the other way, you can see it's M. T. Axed. T. S. Eliot. Aristocrat. Lose Massa. Book, attack, I orca, my own mind. So you can get some meaning going and and have a lot of fun with this form. But I also did other experiments with it in um, three dimensions, and this might be a little hard to see um, on the camera. But the poem is going back. Uh, each plane reads across and down, and then it reads back into the depth. And maybe I can even look at you through the poem. This is kind of fun. Maybe we can uh, pretend that I'm emitting the poem from my third eye or something like that. Anyhow, um, back to the Code Perceiver Portrait Series. I had an idea that what would be really interesting would be to use an image as a constraint on formal constraint on a poem. So what I decided to do was pick a size, um, like a sonnet is always 14 lines. Uh, for this I would pick a size uh, that would be 26 letters by 40 letters. And then within that sign, within that grid, uh, I would uh, use an image, a recognizable image, to create the constraint where the letters can be and can't be. 
Uh, now I enhance that a little bit by making some letters darker than others, but the basic uh, form of the poem is determined by the white spaces. These are the pieces uh, from this upcoming show. Here's this one of my good friend and collaborator Richard Gross. Now all these portraits are members of the Perceiver of Sound League. We have no dogmas, uh, more of a think tank. Um, so I'm going to read a little bit from this. And when you read these, uh, you can read across or down. You can read them however you want. You can have fun with them. Uh, this one starts off, Cupcake Scholar Actor, arou Arouse Now Energies, No Knave Kettle Lictor Arc. A Lictor, I think, is a uh, Roman thing. Um, et nun, pet, adiantum. Adiantum is a sort of a heaven. Uh, Neri KY, run out of lube. Richard, crow, him, armistice. And I like, uh, there's a kind of ambiguity that you can get in this poem that you can't get in uh, some kinds of poetry, which is that, say, for example, here, you've got R.I. Rich Chud, Chud, of course, being cannibalistic humanoid underground dwellers. So it could be uh, Rhode Island Chud, or it could be Richard, uh, Richard said with some sort of accent. And then you see here Crow, C-R-O-W, and if you look, you could take out the C-R-O, like Crow Magnon, and then the word Y is there. So, but then if you say Crow, the whole word Crow, then it's him, H-Y-M-N. So at the same time, you can see that down here you can read uh, Q, nude, woman, uh, nude woman's crone or dure up. So, I, you know, it's, it's uh, a little bit risque, but... This one is... Uh, the uh, lovely and talented Cassandra Victoria Chipurian. This is actually uh, taken from a photograph that I shot uh, for publicity for our Tender Buttons um, performance in Leipzig, Germany. Uh, and as you can see, this one has very, very few white spaces. This is one of the densest ones that I did. And in doing it, I, uh, I cheated a little bit. Um, I used some squares. Uh, that were found by a computer program written by my friend John Serkin. Uh, so, for example, um, I used an 8x8 eight eight square up here that says Whitson's Hosanna, Isolog, Talmus, Snoozy, Unguiacal, Nauseate. Now, uh, Whitson is, uh, I think it's All Saints Day, it's some kind of an ancient holiday. Hosanna, like a song of the angels. Isolog is a kind of polymer that's uh, similar to another polymer um, and so forth. Uh, so then, but this, these are symmetrical squares, so you see it also reads Whitson's Hosanna Isolog down as well. And actually symmetrical squares are a lot more common than asymmetrical squares. But usually when I write them I go completely free uh, free form. Uh, what I do is I first I mark off a grid um, that's 26 by 40 and then I choose which squares I'm going to need to fill in and then the fun begins. I just start writing the poem and see what comes out. I like the way that these poems force my unconscious to work uh, as well as my conscious mind. So this one starts off uh, outbound wind thoughts, inward open aches, clashes loin don't pant sometimes there's a, a couple letters here and there that don't quite and then uh down we can read things like oil painting of uh un oil based are uh twin tiraters <laughs> so uh basically like i i'm hoping that people will take take the time to sit there and just read as much or as little as they want of these. And it requires the active participation of the reader, unlike 
uh, certain kinds of texts in which you're supposed to just uh, get lost and they offer a transparent window to some experience or object that they're describing. Uh, these texts demand the active participation of the reader, uh, for example, in choosing how to divide up the words, uh, deciding which direction, uh, which sequence they want to, uh, to read them in. This is my friend Lauren. Uh, who's an uh, elder, um, reluctant elder of the Perceiver of Sound League. And I really enjoy some of the uh, ambiguities that crept into this one. To age, you think at first maybe, right? But it's to uh, gentle, or it could be to agent let, or to agent le templar, or it could be to a gentle templar, uh, so there's many different ways that that line, for example, could be read, which I think is really fun. This is one of her eyes, and it becomes a little poem all by itself, just floating up there, but it's part of the bigger poem. 26 by 40, I've, I've just chosen because it was about the this, this fewest number of um, squares that I could do where I could get a recognizable face. But one thing I do is want to try to develop a smaller form and perhaps work with other objects besides faces uh, and maybe with abstract shapes and things like that uh, and see what happens with that. I'm always interested in making it easier. Uh, it lets more fun things happen but then you might go back and do a harder uh, harder thing and it develops your skills and then you go back and do an easier thing. I hope that made some sense. What do you think about this exhibit? Yeah.